Vishali Pillai from David Co. as well, talking about DOT 2 and R. Hi guys, I'm Vishalan. I've got five minutes to introduce you to Dota 2 and explain how this has anything to do with R. So good luck. That's to me and to you. It's going to be a race. So firstly, what is Dota 2? Well, Dota 2 is primarily a strategy game. Uh, it's played between two teams, each of five players. And for the non-gamers in the room, I'm going to draw a few parallels to chess because it will help with understanding. So basically, you have two teams. They fight for dominion over a map. And one ultimately claims victory by destroying the other's ancient. Sound familiar? Well, what if we replace map with board and ancient with king? Ah, gotcha. Uh, there also seems to be quite a bit of money in the game. Yeah, 25 and a half million in the, in the last tournament last year, in the biggest tournament last year. Well, that's good and well, but why choose Dota 2 for this talk at Saturday? Well, being an incredibly competitive eSport, uh, it generates very interesting statistics, just like any other competitive sport. And being based in a, a virtual playing field, uh, this is actually the perfect platform for data capture and analytics. There's also a wealth of uh, categorized match data online, and these are exposed via uh, various Dota 2 statistics websites. And most importantly, I love playing the game. I follow the pro scene quite closely, and work like this brings me closer to the Dota community. So very quickly now, an overview of a, a, a simple sort of recipe for how we're going to get our match data. So I head first to dapdota.com. This is a Dota 2 statistics blog. And I download a curated list of professional matches uh, via C uh, using a CSV file, or in a CSV file. And uh, with each match, uh, we then use a specific match ID to query dapdota's match uh, API. So one at a time, we then uh, extract very detailed data on each match. And this is returned via JSON. So there's some information about invoking the API, but I'm not going to go through that in detail. Uh, I've just left it in the slides for anyone interested. It's pretty basic stuff. So onto the data wrangling. Uh, again, this is going to be fairly complex for a five minute talk, so I will uh, discuss at the high level. Uh, the problem we're presented with is we're starting with JSON data, which is not the best uh, structure for analytics. And we want to get this into tidy data format. And the way we're going to do this is a little bit of deployer magic, <laughs> some JSON light to flatten the JSON, and yeah, a little bit of getting caught in lists within lists or listception. But with a little bit of perseverance, and in this case, imagination, because let's be honest, I'm not giving you guys a lot to go on here. <laughs> we can take our JSON into very tidy data format. And before we get into the visualizations, I have some quick terminology that I'd like to cover. This all sounds quite violent, but uh, just try and remember the, the chess analogy again, and this is in no way symbolically different from taking a piece on the chessboard. So when I say kills, I'm talking about the number of times any player kills an opposing player on the enemy team. Death is, is then the inverse of this. And assists is any kill awarded, any kill that a player was a part of but was not awarded to, to him or her. So jumping right in, we're going to look at a very simple visualization. And here I've plotted out the uh, kills in the match given to either team uh, versus the duration of the match or how long it lasted. And as expected, um, we do see an average increase in the number of kills the longer a game lasts. As well, um, the winning team is expected on average to have more kills than the losing team. And this distinction is more clear uh, for lower, lower duration games. And it does become quite fuzzified when we go to longer duration games. It almost seems like it becomes anyone's game at that point. So if we want to see this in more detail, we can look at the next plot, which is looking at the kill share um, given to the, the winning team. So this is the kills that the winning team is responsible for out of the total in the game. And as expected, this is mostly above 50%. And across the board, the concentration above 50% is much higher, 
except when we get to this region here, from about the 45-minute mark onwards, it becomes a less effective predictor of who will win the game. And these matches are interesting, the ones that are very close, uh, closely fought. And if we want to look at this in more detail, I found something interesting in the data. So what we have here is a kill gap band on the x-axis, which is showing how close the matches were in terms of how closely fought they were. We have a 40 kill gap lead at the, on the right, all the way in the middle to 0 to 10, which is the most closely fought games. And then on the left, we have an actual negative gap. And what we can see is the team kill participation actually improves towards the center. So for games that are very closely fought, the team having a high kill participation or being involved in the team fights is one of the most successful predictors of victory. And what does this mean? Well, a closing remark we could say from this is that teams that kill together win together. Unfortunately, teams that die together also lose together. So if you're a Dota 2 player and you're, and you're trying to take something out of this, if you're winning the game early on, stick with your team, push through, and push for victory. If you're losing, try and avoid fighting and buy time for your team to take the victory at the end. Thank you very much.